Welcome to Game Data. This week we're going over how to set up DS and 3DS emulation on a Surface Duo. Why the Duo, you might ask? Well, these dual screen devices are just the right size, form factor, and chipsets to be perfect for emulating your favorite DS and 3DS games. In previous videos, I've even called them the best 2DS emulation machines you can buy outside the 2DS XL. And with the first Surface Duo selling for anywhere between two and $400, as of this video at least, the price point's also about right as well. In general though, with the exception of some 3DS settings, all of these steps also apply to other Android form factors. For example, Z Fold 3s make for a halfway decent 2DS look light if you squint hard enough. The Surface Duos are just the topic of choice right now because they're pretty much perfect for this use case. Plus, I just really love these little guys. Uh, okay, with that out of the way, let's get started. So let's start out with a basic question. Why would you want to emulate DS games? Some folks will hear that question and just roll their eyes, but it's a legitimate question that some people might want to consider before putting in all the effort. Even the best emulators aren't 100% perfect at running 100% of available games, especially 3DS games. There's also something special about owning physical copies of games and playing them on original hardware. For really popular games like Super Mario 3D Land or Mario Kart DS, where physical or digital copies are readily available, it might be worthwhile to consider playing in a on official hardware before anything else. Not to mention, certain features like stereoscopic 3D, for example, are difficult to emulate without specialized hardware, like a 3D TV or a Red Hydrogen 1. However, there are certain games that are either extremely rare or prohibitively expensive to purchase. For those games, the only choices are really to either never experience the games or grab a copy of a ROM and run it on an emulator. It's a morally gray area, to be honest. In the US though, distribution and sale of ROMs are highly frowned upon, legally speaking, and for readily available games, there's a solid argument to be had about buying new to support the game's creators. But when the creators themselves have made the game unavailable, uh, it's really hard to complain about someone finding any way possible to check the games out. If you find yourself in that scenario, just make sure to be cautious about where you're getting your ROMs from. Make sure to only download files from trusted sources. I mean, there are plenty of sketchy sites out there and no one wants to be storing bad files on their hard drive. Personally, I choose to emulate for the sake of preservation. I have a few DS's and 3DS's lying around and they've become progressively worse at reading my game cartridges over time, especially when it comes to older DS games. Combine that with the threat of losing a cartridge or the cartridge degrading slowly over time and I figured making backups was the best route to go. This method's also 100% legal considering these are games I own and all I'm doing is transferring the files for storage and playback on another storage device. Now, in the world of emulation, there's typically many ways to emulate the same console. For this video, we're looking at the two most reliable apps I've used, Drastic for DS games and Citra for 3DS games. As a heads up, you'll want to either span Drastic and Citra upon opening or go into your settings and set both apps to open span by default. Since playing on one screen kind of defeats the purpose of using a Surface Duo. When opening the app for the first time, you'll want to tap the Load New Game option and navigate to the folder you created containing all of your DS ROMs. As long as you saved your files correctly, the game should load as expected. If you're experiencing something different, I'd recommend fiddling with your graphic settings a bit or Googling to see if someone else has come across a similar problem with Drastic in particular. Emulating a game for the first time, the UI might look differently for different people. 
especially depending on whether you're using a Surface Duo 1 or a Surface Duo 2. And this is where the real fine tuning happens. To get everything looking accurate, start by pressing the menu button and selecting Edit Screens and Virtual Pad. This is your main option for changing the size of the screens, button location, and button scaling. To rearrange the emulated screens, simply drag them around to wherever you'd like. The resize screen and open tools options can then be used to scale the different screens. I typically like to expand the top screen to fill the Duo's top screen and the bottom screen to fill about 50% of the Duo's bottom screen. It's more or less the size difference between the DS's physical screens and leaves plenty of room for touch controls. Speaking of touch controls, to organize those, tap Menu, then Edit Controller Layout. From here, it's also as easy as dragging buttons to wherever is comfortable and resizing wherever necessary. For the most part, there's no wrong way to arrange the buttons. However, I do find the L and R buttons to be particularly awkward and tend to stash them away on the top screen to declutter the bottom screen. If you're like me and have save files from physical games or other DS emulators, you can rest easy knowing that it's typically easy to make save files accessible to Drastic by copying them to the Drastic backup directory and then renaming them with a .dsv extension. I can't promise that this will work 100% of the time, but I was able to take the save file from my physical copy of Pokemon Diamond and load it into Drastic this way, before enabling a ton of cheats to access special events, because yeah, cheat codes are half the fun of copying over your old saves to an emulator. Next up, we have Citra. You know, Citra still amazes me. Of course, modern Snapdragon processors are much more powerful than the new 3DS, but being able to emulate those games fairly well with 3D where available is pretty freaking awesome. With that in mind, games that play well via Citra on Surface Duos are far fewer than the DS games which play great via Drastic. 3DS games tend to be a bit more demanding in general, as expected. You'll also run into some logistical issues if you didn't remember to decrypt your ROMs. Standard Citra is also less feature rich than Drastic and contains fewer tweaks to graphics and the user interface. Cheat codes are also kinda awkward, potentially requiring you to copy the action replay codes directly to the Citra cheats directory. But if you're just looking to play games as is, Citra will typically do you well. Assuming you have all your games in place, to get started, all you need to do is tap the folder icon in the top right, followed by Select Games Folder. Once the right folder is selected, all your games will show up in the Citra home screen. To get started, just tap the game you'd like to play and cross your fingers that it runs fine. Citra's documentation on game compatibility will help quite a bit if you're not into trial and error here. Given that your game runs fine, you'll start the real battle, changing the screen layout. You can easily edit button locations by selecting Edit Layout and dragging everything to where you'd like. Unfortunately, unlike Drastic, Citra doesn't have any built-in settings to rearrange the emulated screen locations and sizes. For some phones, that might still work out okay, but the hinge gap of the Surface Duos haven't worked well with default settings in my experience. It's a bit of a pain, but the only way to actually change these settings with any accuracy is to alter a configuration file in Citra's config directory. Once open, you'll see an impressive amount of documentation detailing what every parameter in the file does. Though, I have a feeling that this much reading will be a bit overwhelming for most people. It definitely is for me. I'd recommend scrolling down to the layout section though, in particular. Here, you'll be able to turn on custom layouts and indicate the bounds for both screens. There's plenty of documentation online about Surface Duo screen sizes and the original ratio of 3DS screens if you want to construct your own layouts. If you're less of a trial and error sort of person though, I've left a Google Drive folder link in the video description containing the configuration files I use to play games on my devices. To use them with your device, just rename the config.ini file in Citrus config folder to something else and copy the new file you want to use. Once in place, 
you should be able to load your game of choice with the full 2DS experience. If you have save files you want to use from your cartridge, you can also copy those files to your Citra Emu directory without too much work. To grab the save files in the right format, I personally booted up my modded 3DS and opened a program called FBI. I'd installed this during the initial modification process, and it allows me to easily browse the save data for the cartridge I have inserted. Similarly, you'd use the same process for any games downloaded to the system directly. After copying the data to my SD card, I was able to transfer it over to the Citra Emu directory on my Surface Duo 2 and access it without any issue. A few tips for this process though. I'd recommend starting the game at least once before downloading save data. That'll allow Citra to create all the necessary folders and save you a bit of hassle in the long run. Also, be aware that the save data folders are named after the alphanumeric ID used for each .3ds file. If you're like me and rename files to make more sense, this could be a bit confusing, but I was able to figure it out by cross-referencing the date times of when I saved my files in my game. There's also at least one website I found that you could use to cross-reference names if needed. I'll include that website down in the description in case anyone needs it themselves. Now that we've gone over how to set up touch controls in both apps, let's talk about adding physical buttons. For single screen emulators like Dolphin, using something like an Xbox controller works pretty well, albeit still either needing some table space or a specialized phone clip. Unfortunately, for dual screen games, the need to run both screens at once while occasionally touching the bottom screen will throw a wrench into whatever plans you might have for using a standard controller. You could technically still prop the duo up on a table or get a hyper specialized phone clip, but both options are slightly cumbersome. Instead, I'd recommend grabbing a controller that grips onto both sides of the phone, like a GameStore X2. In particular, you'll want a Bluetooth model since the offset USB-C ports on the Duo make other models a bit more awkwardly positioned. Still, these controllers make the control scheme a bit less compact than the original hardware, but not by much while still being plenty comfortable to use. Within both Drastic and Citra, you can also actively reassign buttons if the default setup doesn't work well for you. Although, I will say, touch controls are great in both apps and can be further fine-tuned with a bit of effort. If you plan to play mostly slower RPGs, like Pokemon games, touch controls are really all you'll ever need. Physical buttons only become necessary for folks who either can't stand touch controls or want to play faster paced games, like Super Smash Brothers for 3DS. I hope all of this has shed some additional light on how to set up emulation on Surface Duos. But you know, as I said before, being able to emulate games is pretty important at both having appropriate access and creating backups in case of hardware failure. If you're interested in DS and 3DS emulation in particular, it's really hard to do better than Surface Duos running Drastic or Citra. But emulation should be for everyone, and I'd recommend giving it a shot even if a Surface Duo isn't within your personal budget. But those are my thoughts. What are yours? Do you have any other suggestions for DS or 3DS emulation, particularly settings or apps you use? Do you have an emulation device of choice other than the Surface Duo that you think might be better? Let me know down in the comments. Also, if you like this video, go ahead and click that like button. Plus, if you'd like to see additional videos about cool Android devices, which more people should definitely buy, especially since they're currently dirt cheap compared to other similar emulation devices, go ahead and also click that subscribe button. We have plenty of tech and video game content right on the horizon, including a look at the analog pocket, which I've been waiting to arrive for far too long. But that's all for today. Until next time, catch you later.